21 game using our Java with classes and everything. And we're ready to code out the game, or at least I thought so yesterday. And if we look at the algorithm, we're going to deal two cards to all of the players, and we got to flip all the cards. Um, and we've got this whole algorithm of what we're going to do. While the player asks for a hit and player's not busted, dealer will play an additional card. I tried to get to this point yesterday when I realized we need to add a little more functionality for this to work right. And so as I began proceeding, I realized we need to make changes to the card class, to the hand, and to the deck. So in this particular video, I'm going to focus on adding what we need, and then we'll focus on the actual game itself. So with that in mind, the first thing I wanted to do is deal with the card. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm going to deal with the card is we have a problem with our aces. The way we had our game before, aces were worth one but we also made them possibly worth 11. So how are we going to deal with that? We need a way to know if a card is an ace or a not. And if you know anything about the rank, every rank has a numeric value and a string value. So what we're going to do is it, we're gonna, we looked at card and I suddenly realized we can get the rank and we can get the suit but we can't get the string value of the rank, and we need that to know if it's an ace or a not. Okay, so we're gonna add one more method here. It's gonna be public, um, and it's related to rank, so I'm actually gonna move it above. Right after we get the rank, we're gonna do a thing called print rank, and it's a string. It's gonna return a string. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and put print rank like so and it's really easy it's just like we did um return rank but if you may recall we have print rank and we had get rank so we're just taking advantage of print rank so print rank we're now adding as an ability for our card to get the rank as a string okay and i'll just put it on here as a comment And this is primarily for aces. Okay. So we add that little functionality. Very simple. It's just one extra method. It's um, an accessor method. It allows us to access the rank of a particular card. And that's all we have to do on there. So our card is ready to deal with aces, but let's talk about the hand. Because on our hand, we also have an issue here. We need to know, on any given hand, how many points do we have? So what we're going to do is we're going to add another method, and this one is going to return the total, okay? So we're going to return the total points of a hand. So make sure you're in your hand class. This is going to be public it's going to return an integer, right? Because the total is a whole number. And we'll just call it get total, like so. We don't need any parameters, so we won't pass it anything in here. However, what we do need to know, we need to know two things, okay? The first thing we need to know is what are the points that we're gonna return. So we're gonna declare a variable inside of the method, and we're gonna call it total PTS for points. We're going to set it to, we're going to initialize it to zero. And then I don't like those red underlines. So at the end, we're going to return that value. So I always like to return that value uh, so that this is a working method at this point. At this point, it's worth zero, right? So what we need to do is we need to find out how many points do we have in our hand. And as you may recall, an ace can be worth one or an ace can be worth 11. Okay. Now, if we look at the rank, you will see that ace is just equal to one to begin with. But if we could make it worth 11, we should. So if you think about it, if we have a total of 10 points, we're gonna want that ace to be worth 11, correct? So we're gonna wanna add the 11 to our existing 10 points, which gives us 21 and wins. But if anything is greater than 10, we have to use the ace as a one. So it's a very straightforward kind of thing here. However, we need to know, do we have an ace in our hand or not? So we're going to create another data type to help us with it. It's going to be Boolean, 
And we're trying to find out if we have an ace or not. So we're going to call it has ace. We're going to set it to false to begin with. Because I always like to initialize all my variables to a value that won't trigger an error automatically. So we're going to assume we don't have an ace until we've proven we do have an ace. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to, first of all, find out, one, do we have an ace? Two, what are our total points? Then, if we have an ace, we're going to do one more step, and that's going to adjust the points if we need to. So we're going to start by just getting... I'm going to get total points, and then any aces will be, by default, will be worth one. Okay, because we've already coded it to be that way. Okay, so I just put that in the comments so you know what we're doing here. So what we have to do is basically loop through all of our cards and then um, get the total points, uh, add them to total points, and um, while we're looping through the cards, check for aces. Okay, so we're going to do four. We're gonna, now, in this case, we have to do a standard um, for loop. So we're going to set i to 0, and then we're going to do while i is less than cards dot size. So as long as we're, we are in the number of cards, we're going to loop through it. And we've got to do i plus plus, your standard for loop. And inside of our loop, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our points. So we're going to get the point value of each card, add it to total points. So we're going to do plus equals. And now we got to get the card. So we do cards.get. I'm going to pass it an index value. That's i. We're going to get i. And then from that, by the way, cards get i gets us the first card or the second or the third, depending on where we are in the loop. Okay. And then we're going to add a little dot here because just we have the card, we still need to get the rank. And it's the rank that is the point value. See, it returns an int. So I'm going to use cards.getI.getRank. Um, so we add that rank to it. And then we're going to check. Check to see if the card's an ace. So we need to do an if statement. If. Cards, and this is why we had that other get i dot, and this time it's print rank, okay. And we're going to compare it to a string, which would be ace, okay. Hopefully that makes sense. So if that card get rank, now we're going to set has ace to true, okay. So as we're looping through, while we're totaling, we might as well check to see if we have an ace. And if we do, set has ace to true. Okay. So now we're going to make the ace worth 11 if total points are less than 11. Actually, less than or equal to. You know why, of course, is because the ace already counts as one. So if the ace was a one and it was in there, that 11 would mean it was 10 plus the one. And if it's less than that, we're gonna, we might as well just go ahead and add it in. So keep that in mind. So less than or equal to 11. And I'll just go ahead and put the, the sign here. There we go. Okay. So if. Now we need to do a compound comparison. So first of all, we need to make sure we have an ace. So if has ace, and that's going to return a true or a false. So if that returns a false, we're going to be done. So we need to do the double and sign because we're going to say it not only has to have an ace, but the total points must be less than or equal to 11. No, no. Because ace, it, the question was, wouldn't it be less than or equal to 21? No, because we're starting with ace equal to 1. Since it equals 1, 
it can be 1 or 11. So we need to know, can we make it 11 and get us to 21 or close to 21? So the other question is, wait a minute, wouldn't that make it to 22? Because if we add 11, well, here's the deal. Ace is, if Ace is already in there, that's one of those 11 points. So the, the real trick is, what do we add? In this case, we only add 10 because Ace already had one point. So we just add that to total points. And we're just going to add 10 to total points. I hadn't really told you what I was going to do with it. But now you know, okay, so if it has an ace and the total points are less than or equal to 11, we add 10 more. Okay. So when we get the total, we will add that ace as 10 if we can. And in the last class, we're going to modify the deck a little bit. There's a couple things that we want to do in our deck. Um, we've got our, I'll just go ahead and hide these comments here. So you've got the populate method. You've got the shuffle method. I'm just going to go ahead and collapse that for now and collapse the populate. We have a deal method. Now, we're going to add two more things to this. Um, the first thing I want to do is... Um, in our game, we're going to deal out to all of our players, and we're going to flip their cards. But we're going to deal to the dealer and not flip cards, because the dealer doesn't play till everyone has busted or chosen to stay their hand. So what we need to do is, one, we want the deck to be able to flip cards, but we also want to be able to deal to just one player. And we, So it's very simple, but we'll show you that in just a moment. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do what's called the method override to deal or method overload, excuse me, overload. So we're going to start with public void deal. We already have one that deals to an array of hands, but instead we're going to deal to a single hand. So that's hand, hand, comma, int, per hand, and it works pretty much the same way as we did with the other one, only this time we don't need to do a nested loop. We just need to loop through all of the cards in a hand. So we start with the first outer loop, and that's right. Um, but now all we have to do is give the cards to the other hand. So it's this dot give and it's card uh, oh yeah cards dot get and we're going to pull off the top of the deck like we did up over here and the other hand is going to be um, hand index position I I believe oh no 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 sorry just hand because we are dealing to an actual hand of cards, um, and that's this hand. Uh, yeah, the confusion was here we had to use indexing because we had multiple hands in an array. In this case, it's just a single hand. So I'll put on here Okay. So now we have the deal method ready to go. Um, and there's one more thing we want to do, and that's just flip the cards. And to flip a card, it's void because it doesn't return a value. Um, and it's flip card. And we need to say what card we're going to flip. Flip it good. And then it's just C dot flip card. Ah, sorry. C eh, dot flip card. Like so. All right, at this point, um, all of our methods are pretty much ready. Now, I might find as we start developing the game that we might have some more errors, that, or not errors, but things that we want to do to modify. But at least now we can deal with dealing out to one player. Um, we can also um, know if it's an ace or a not. We can then um, deal with our points, whether it's an ace or not. So in the next video, I'll start working on the actual game of 21.